everyone. Welcome back to another episode of CoinLogic TV. I am your host, The Logical Dude. So today is Monday, the 31st of August in the year of 2020, this crazy year that we've got going on. Anyway, uh, just to kind of bring you a little bit of an update on the markets for this fine Monday morning, we've got uh, Bitcoin ran up over uh, 11,700. It has hung out there. The weekly close uh, from last week closed above uh, 11,600 again for the third straight week in a row, and we'll talk about that in the chart. So that's looking real bullish for me for long term. Ethereum is up over 435. There's At this point, I don't think there's any anything stopping Ethereum. Um, it, it's, it, it's a monster. It's a beast. Um, this bull run is going to be very heavily in Ethereum's favor, in my opinion, with all the DeFi stuff that's going on, everything, you know, being that most of the DeFi, I will say most, of the DeFi space is actually built on top of Ethereum. So um, if you're not holding the Ethereum, you're missing out. Um, yeah, I'm trying to continue to build my stack some more because this thing's got a lot of room to grow. Um, anyway, uh, we had some uh, some definite movement here in the top 10 over the last week or so. Uh, Chainlink has popped up to the number five spot. I think it did that last week, um, but it's holding strong on the number five spot. Polkadot has been a beast and a half and has shot up to the number six spot. Um, Polkadot, I am working on doing some more research on and we'll probably do a little bit of a, you know, kind of an overview video of it. Um, but it's basically an interoperability chain for Ethereum. It's to help, uh, and apparently it's helping Ethereum scalability and that kind of thing. And then it's got basically its own ecosystem that, has projects running on it so Polkadot is a beast and I feel like together Polkadot and Ethereum is gonna take over uh, the crypto space so that or at least that's what's kind of been you know going as far as the sentiment of the markets I will say anyway so I did pick me up some Polkadot this week um, in my Binance account and just kind of holding it because I looked through the website and couldn't find anything for a wallet so I'm just gonna hold it in my Binance account and uh, just wait and you know kind of keep averaging into it a little bit I believe because uh, I got a feeling that Polkadot is going to be a big part of the next bull run so anyway, just kind of uh, creeping on through. Um, Bitcoin Cash dropped to seventh. Litecoin's hanging out at eighth. Cardano's ninth, and Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision's running around the tenth spot. Um, everything else kind of got pushed down a little bit um, when Polkadot decided it was going to make its make its run up to the top ten. Uh, this a uh, Wi-Fi coin, this Yearn Finance, that's sitting at almost forty thousand dollars a coin. You know. Congrats to all those that got into that pump and dump scheme. I don't know what's going on. I mean, even the the creator of the Yearn Finance token doesn't know why it's going so astronomically high. But uh, that's uh, that's crypto bull market. Nothing makes sense in this in this day and time. So I'm personally not one that's invested in it because I don't go chasing these new little shiny coins. Um, I would rather have more established projects. Um, the only reason I'm chasing after Polkadot, Lend, and Band is because they have big fundamentals behind them. Um, I don't even know what the fundamentals of urine finance is. So um, it just kind of popped on the market and then went sky high because everybody likes to FOMO into everything. So my advice is don't FOMO into stuff. Do your research and find good times for pullbacks and things like that anyway moving along we're going to talk about the trending so as you can see the top 10 gainers were yuma wi-fi um, rsr kusama which is a kusama is a part of the polka dot ecosystem and then we've got polka dot down here is one of the top ones as well but anyway ample fourth brand numerator compound polka dot and waves are in the top 10 the bottom ones, uh, the top losers that are going on for the last 24 hours is Nest Protocol, DeFi.Money. I guess this is part of the urine finance thing. I don't know what any of this is about. Uh, Ocean Protocol, and then uh, Earwave, NXM, Thor, Energy Web Token, Chainlink, and Ave Link are down a bit. I, some of the stuff I've never even heard of is, you know... Don't even know what these coins do. Um, and you know what the top 10 by market cap looks like. So here's a glimpse of the top 10 by volume. And we're going down here. Bitcoin is still rated as a buy by uh, 
trading view for the technical analysis charts and we are still sitting at a good hefty 75 on the greed scale so we still greedy up in this space going over to the charts just to kind of take a quick look and uh see what's going on in the price action uh this is what we're looking at here is the total market cap for the altcoin space this is all of the crypto space minus bitcoin so reason I like looking at this is I like comparing what's happening with Bitcoin versus the altcoins. And you can see the altcoins may be looking to make a little rise here. We've got a definite crook up going in the MACD here. We've got some rising action coming on here in the, um, in the RSI. It's in bullish territory. And it's not anywhere near overbought yet. So uh, the altcoins still definitely have some room to run here. Uh, we're going to take a look over at Bitcoin real quick. And Bitcoin uh, has been finding this support level right here around 11,600, something like that. We have the same little crook up coming in the RS, uh, in the uh, MACD and the RSI coming down here. So it's, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on with that. Um, some big moves coming ahead. The Bitcoin dominance is hanging out around 60. Um, the market said CoinGecko had it at 55, but I'm going based on what TradingView has. So if you look here, um, the dominance looks like it actually may be rolling over a little bit. Uh, so this could be really good for some altcoin trading for the short term time frame. Uh, because when the BTC dominance drops, that means that money is flowing into some of the altcoins. So with Bitcoin being kind of on the rise, I would watch your higher cap USDT trading pairs. Um, I would be careful trading any Bitcoin trading pairs um, if Bitcoin has a lot of volatility going on. So I'm kind of waiting to see if Bitcoin's going to make a move uh, because it has been kind of consolidating. And you can come over here and let's go check the weekly. And you can see the weekly, we've kind of been consolidating around this level here. So we're looking for either, you know, push up or push down, whichever way the market wants to go here. I feel like, you know, we could have a little bit of a drop down before we keep going. A little bit of a recorrection from where we're at. But we're holding steady right now. So we'll just kind of see where it goes from here. Quick look at Ethereum. Ethereum has been a monster, uh, but on the weekly here, we are in definite overbought territory. So um, I am personally long-term on ETH, and I'm just looking for buying opportunities at this point. I'm not selling anytime soon anymore my ETH. So uh, very much looking like the Bitcoin charts and the total altcoin charts. So we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at our baby Hive. And um, so I think the next video is going to be kind of an overview on getting started with Hive. That's uh, what I'm going to be focusing on next. But if you see here, we did kind of bounce off the bottom levels of our Bollinger Bands here. Uh, this is on the daily chart. And we are looking at that same kind of MACD setup as on Bitcoin and Ethereum, where we're losing some of the uh, downward momentum here on the histogram. And it looks like we're curving up on the MACD. So this may be a really good buying opportunity, guys for uh, buying up some Hive. So hopefully we can get Hive to uh, push up here to some higher support ranges and break through the 20 and uh, get up into some more bullish territory here. We got some up cricks on the uh, RSI levels coming here too. We've got plenty of room to run here on the RSI. So, you know, that's kind of uh, my little market overview for the day. I, you know, you all know which coins I look at and which ones I'm focusing on. Uh, real quick, kind of go through here. Link, everything's pretty much kind of looking the same kind of way. Basic attention token um, has been a monster. And it looks like it's kind of recorrecting and settling down. We're finding some consolidation here around the $0.35 cent level. Um, basic attention token is one of those that I'm holding long term. I've got um, a wad of it set up into uh, crypto.com that's earning 4% interest along with my chain link as well. Um, because, yeah, these are all basically long term holds for me. Things that I'm watching for the bull run. Basic attention token. Next to things like Hive and Ethereum have some of the best use cases in crypto. Basic attention token being with the Brave browser. If you're not using the Brave browser, highly recommend the Brave browser. Um, 
we are a Brave Verified publisher. You can tip uh, the CoinLogic site with Brave. We also have a link uh, somewhere in here. I think it's on the front page that you can uh, click and go and download Brave using our link, and it'll benefit both of us. So we'd appreciate that. Um, quick little look at Litecoin. Litecoin had a nice little pump back up around $60, and it looks like it may be... Uh, Find some consolidation, maybe looking for, I'm looking for like a three bar rise up here, um, hopefully, a three or four bar, three or four bar rise. Um, so we'll see what happens in some consolidation here. Hopefully Litecoin will follow the rest of it. And I do have a small little stack of Litecoin that's gaining an interest in BlockFi. And then we've got good old Tezos. So Tezos looks like it took a bounce off the bottom Bollinger Bands here. Got the same kind of MACD pattern. Um, do have a curve down on the RSI. So um, Tezos is one that I, I'm holding. I like the staking on it. You're, I'm earning about 5.79% right now in my Exodus wallet. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of action going on on the Tezos blockchain. Um, not a lot of projects are using it, that kind of thing that I'm seeing. So I this is one that I'm questioning. Um, so I'm going to keep holding it for, for a little while, and we'll see how it goes. But I may move my at least half of my Tezos stack back into like Ethereum or something like that. So we'll see what happens there. Anyway, quick little look over here at the News Center. Um, you can definitely see that, you know, we've got some of our top, uh, news sources putting out articles and, uh, really, you know, just kind of everything that's be being spouted out on YouTube. You can kind of take a read through here and see what different, um, different articles may tap your fancy here. I personally am not one that I like to go through and really spout off a bunch of news, um, because, Everybody else is talking about the same thing, and I don't want to be an echo chamber. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that is my little quick Monday morning overview of the markets. And um, so, look for next week, I'm going to be doing an overview kind of on Hive and how to get started with Hive. Uh, that's, you know, we're really Hive centric here. I love, you know, I love the Hive blockchain. It's one of the best communities in crypto. Uh, you can do virtually everything that you need to do all within the Hive ecosystem. So check that out for the next video. Hope you guys have a great one. Be cool, be real, and abide. And as always, don't get wrecked. Have a great day, guys. Peace.